Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mad Boys channel. If you're new around here, my name is Ruchel and I'm one of the three people that run this channel. We're all pre-med students at the University of Toronto. Today, we'll be talking about some top secret information that the creators of the MCAT, the AAMC, don't actually tell you when it comes to succeeding on the MCAT. The last tip is probably the most important, so be sure to stick around till the end. Let's get started. All of us know about the typical resources that we use to study for the MCAT, like Princeton Review, like Kaplan, and like Khan Academy. But you should never use the Kaplan books for cars and for psychology. But you'd ask, Nimit, why would you not use a book that you just paid so much money for? It's because there are more low-key, more useful resources that can actually be much more handy and save you a lot of time. Now, the first thing on the list of resources that Nimit was talking about is the psych document created by MCAT Pros. It's a perfect summary of all the psych content that you need for the MCAT. And if you're in a time crunch, it would definitely help. You could either read the 300 page document or the 55 page version that we created of the MCAT Pros document. You can find the link for it in the bio below. What Nimit said might have left you wondering about what sorts of secret resources there are for the car section. Aside from our videos on it, which we have linked in the description below, they do say old is gold, and that's why we recommend the Exam Crackers Verbal Reasoning Book. This resource may not be familiar to you, but we can assure you that some of the passages in that book are some of the hardest you'll ever see. So we do recommend trying to check that resource out, and doing those harder passages will just mean that your MCAT cars passages will be a lot easier in comparison. So you'll be thanking yourself for putting in that extra effort. To add on to what Ruchel said about the car section, make sure you always read the passage first and then move on to the questions. If you do it the other way around, like people on Squid Game did in Red Light, Green Light, you're going to end up missing out on that 130 and you're going to get loads of questions wrong. This is because if you read the passage first, you can get rid of all those assumptions you had and also get that critical information very soon. All right, now enough about cards. Let's talk about physics. If you're like us and you're not the greatest at physics, I'm going to show you this one trick that helped us a lot when we were studying for the MCAT and it's called dimensional analysis. It's essentially breaking down the value or the number down to its most basic units. Now let's take 10 joules for example. We know that joules is a unit of energy, but it can also be written as newtons times meters. Just knowing this bit of information can help you answer a lot more questions related to energy. Now let's just say there's too many numbers or too many variables. All you have to do is represent it in a way that it equates to newtons times meters. This is especially useful when you can't remember that formula on test day, and there's so many formulas that you need to remember, so it's a very good possibility. So try your best to break down the unit into its most simplest form, and you'll be able to solve that question. And we've broken this tip down further in our MCAT physics video. It's in our description, so make sure you check that out. So one strategy you can use to maximize the amount of questions you get right is to try going through the questions pretty quickly. <laughs> What I mean by this is that you should answer all the questions that you find to be pretty easy and flag the ones that you find to be more difficult and that require more thinking. The reason we say this is because oftentimes people can end up spending too much time on one question and obviously this will mean that they don't have enough time for the questions near the end of the exam and they have to rush it all. And of course, this goes without saying, but if you do do that, you're going to get a terrible score. There's no way around it uh, unless you pull off some sort of miracle that you end up guessing all those questions right. One tip that changed my entire studying for the MCAT was the use of sticky notes. What I would do is every time I'd come across something that I didn't know, I would write it down on a sticky note and then I'd put the solution on it and then stick it up on my wall. This way, whenever I'd sit down to do some work, I'd always look at all the concepts that I didn't know and over a few days these concepts just became more and more clear and I kept taking the sticky notes down and putting up new concepts that I didn't know. This is another tip that you must absolutely know and it's not as transparent on a lot of the websites. We've heard countless stories about people getting disqualified from the MCAT for multiple reasons and one of the true stories that I've heard and it's a true story that someone brought a novel or a reading book to the hall and they got disqualified for reading the book during their breaks. Someone got disqualified for talking to other applicants. 
So it's absolutely essential that all you bring on your test day is a water bottle, your ID, and um, some snacks for your lunch. And that's about it. This is why we recommend not talking to anyone during your breaks when you're taking the MCAT. And you may even want to avoid taking the test the same day as your friends for this very reason. In almost every section of the MCAT, figures and tables are super important. Thank God they aren't in the car section though, that section is already hard enough as it is. But essentially, figures and tables are super important because so many questions do ask you to take information from them to answer the question correctly. But I will say that most passages actually have a lot of irrelevant information in the wording. And what I mean by this is that aside from certain keywords or key phrases, you don't actually need to read the entire passage in order to answer certain questions. And this is really just from personal experience. And you'll actually identify this as you do more practice or practice exams. So do keep this in mind when you're trying to answer questions on the MCAT, not reading the entire passage in full detail may save you some time. This tip that I'm about to tell you is super top secret, so make sure you don't tell anyone. And the tip is, wear comfortable clothing to the MCAT. Now, I know that sounds simple, but let me just paint a picture for you. When I took the MCAT, someone wore a full-on suit to take the exam. Now, I took it in the middle of the summer and it was extremely hot, so that must have been a mission for him and I, I, I just don't understand how he was able to finish the exam to begin with. So make sure that you're wearing comfortable clothing. I wore some shorts and some t-shirt and I was good. So make sure you're wearing some comfortable clothing and you're able to take the exam with ease. If what Naman said didn't blow your mind, this definitely will. Our final tip for you today is to use breathing techniques in order to calm your mind when you're on those optional breaks in between sections of the MCAT. I do understand how important it is to maintain your stress levels during a test because being overly stressed can impede your performance. And believe me, I speak from personal experience. People like David Blaine and Wim Hof have marveled at the effectiveness of breathing techniques when it comes to reducing your stress levels and calming yourself down in order to optimally focus on the task at hand. So using these during your break can really help you focus and get ready to kill the MCAT. And that brings us to the end of the video. We hope it was useful and that you found it a little enjoyable. And if you really did enjoy it, then please do leave a like and a comment. We really love replying to your comments and try to help as much as possible. So if you have any questions or any concerns, we'll answer them right away and make sure you subscribe. And that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.